Lack of sleep is the number one predictor of premature death from cardiovascular disease. You have toxic relationships, it's going to cause physical toxicity. No matter what you do, no matter how healthy you are, there is old age, there is infirmity, and there is death. What else in terms of starting your day, like daily habits? So you talk about sleep as being incredibly important. Here are the the daily habits. Um, Number one is sleep. Now we know, by the way, that lack of sleep is the number one predictor of premature death from cardiovascular disease. Lack of sleep is also a predictor of Alzheimer's. Lack of sleep interferes with your creativity. Lack of sleep causes inflammation. So that's for sure. Number one. Number two, uh, I think, is uh, any practice that quietens the mind. Meditation, reflection, contemplation, sitting quietly, watching your breath, etc. Number three is exercise. Number four is mind-body coordination, as in that's different than regular exercise. You yoga practice and martial arts, breathing practices, tai chi, qigong, they actually activate a different part of your nervous system, which is the parasympathetic nervous system, which causes self-regulation in the body. So it's not just exercise. It's you know something that puts mind and body together, even gymnastics or um, things like judo and I mentioned martial arts, but yoga is my practice. Uh, Then emotionals, your emotional and physical environment, your social environment, because we live as social beings. So, you know, if if you have toxic relationships, it's going to cause physical toxicity. Um, Then nutrition, we now know that, uh, you know, that food that causes inflammation, refined, manufactured, processed food with chemicals, antibiotics, hormones, insecticides, pesticides. It's poison. It's like putting poison, putting Agent Orange in your body. Uh, So organic food, farm to table, maximum diversity of plant-based foods. Now we know a lot about micronutrients. We know about biological rhythms. But ultimately, I think spiritual experience is very important because no matter what you do, no matter what you do, no matter how healthy you are, there is old age, there is infirmity, and there is death. So unless you face those right head on, when you're healthy, not when you're in a crisis, not when somebody dies in your family, then everybody panics. Okay, I had a crisis in my life when I was six years old. You know, my father was in England. He was um, uh, training to be a cardiologist. I was living with my grandfather. And one day we got a telegram that my father had passed all his exams. He was now fellow of the Royal College of Physicians. Big deal in those days. We got a telegram. My grandfather uh, wanted to celebrate. So he took me and my little brother to a carnival, then to a uh, to a movie. I even remember the movie, Alibaba and the 40 Thieves. And then uh, we went to a fancy restaurant. And then in the middle of the night, he died. And uh, they took him to, to, for cremation, brought his ashes back in a little jar about the size of this coffee cup or a little bigger. And one of my uncles said, what happened? L- yesterday, he was taking the kids to a carnival and Today is a bunch of ashes. My little brother, who later became the dean of education at Harvard Medical School, he was four years old. He started to lose his skin. His skin started peeling off. I went into a panic. And, you know, my uncles took my brother to every physician. They couldn't find a diagnosis till somebody said, you know, he's missing his parents. He's feeling vulnerable. He's losing his skin shedding his skin because he's that's a metaphor for his vulnerability. He'll be fine when his parents come back. And sure enough, as soon as they came, my brother was healed. So at six years, I had a crisis, existential crisis. Went on to become a doctor. But what happens? You go to medical school, the first thing you see is, an, is, a, is a corpse. You're supposed to understand life by <laughs> dissecting a body. You know, it's the way we are trained. You started off by looking at a human being as an anatomical structure rather than 
a process in consciousness. So it took me a long time, you know, going through medical school, training, myself going through crises, smoking, addictive behavior, alcohol. I remember um, res uh, resuscitating a patient, putting a pacemaker, putting him on a respirator and then going outside to smoke a cigarette. And then, you know, I was disgusted with myself. I threw away my cigarette. That evening, I threw away the scotch and I decided that I want to understand who am I. It's almost like in that moment you observed someone that was so full of life just moments earlier turn into, as you said, ashes in a jar. Ashes in a jar, scattered in the wind. <clears throat> and you go, where is the, where is my granddad? Yeah. He's not local. Non local. <laughs> right. Which is our essential nature, actually. To be non local is to be connected with all that is. And Indian poetry and poets in general, from William Blake, mm. you know, uh, we are led to believe a lie when we see with and not through the eye that was born in a night to perish in a night while the soul slept in beams of light. So when we look through the conditioned mind, that's a lie. When you look beyond the conditioned mind, that is light. Do you think you'd be doing the work you are today if your granddad hadn't passed away when you were six in those circumstances? I think that was a very pivotal moment at six years of age. Existential crisis, most people don't have that at the age of six. Because it, it, it brought you a bunch of questions, didn't it? Really yeah. profound questions about the nature of life yeah. and existence existence and and love and mm -hmm. Tagore, Indian poet love is not a sentiment it's the ultimate truth at the heart of creation that you and the other are the same being in different uniforms is it, do, you, do you ever ponder if some of your beliefs are if that moment really was pivotal that some of your beliefs might have been a way to justify your sadness yeah denial is a way of justifying sadness i don't think belief is belief in many ways is a cover-up for insecurity you know if i said do you believe in electricity you said no i see that device that transistor that tv set electricity gravity is my experience so i don't believe in belief but faith is something else. Faith is the knowingness of the invisible without which there is nothing visible. The invisible is the source of all things visible. Yeah. If you love the Diary of a CEO brand and you watch this channel, please do me a huge favor, become part of the 15% of the viewers on this channel that have hit the subscribe button. It helps us tremendously and the bigger the channel gets, the bigger the guests. Uh -huh.